Thank you very much. Um, and so we are going to be talking about startups and how we can actually use startups to actually do programs at the library. A little bit about me. I'm a 2014 Library Journal mover and shaker in the area of marketing. I was also a 2011 Eureka Leadership Fellow. All my Eurekans. Woo! Woo! Thank you. Thank you very much. 2009 uh, ALA Emerging Leader, and this year I'm also uh, your ALA Counselor and uh, on the Newberry Committee. So, but that has nothing to do with my presentation. <laughs> so, here's what I'm going to be covering. The difference between a business and a startup, and why you guys want to work with startups at your library, and how you guys can actually work with local startups and apply them to your library programs. And then, how do you find startups in your area? And let me tell you something, just because you don't work in the Silicon Valley doesn't mean you can't find a startup to work with, and then the future. So I like to think about working with startups like gambling. How many of you guys have been to Vegas before, right? Sometimes you win big, and sometimes you lose. But here's the deal. Lady Luck has been on my side. I've actually uh, been doing pretty well. And as Charlie Sheen would say, I'm winning. So it's not too bad. So here's the difference between businesses and startups. I like to think of businesses like having a husband or a wife, for that matter. You have an established relationship. It's very stable. And you can always count on them for stuff. But with a startup, unfortunately, it's like dating. And what I mean is one minute they're there and the next minute they could be gone. So I'm going to teach you how to keep them around so that they end up being like your husband or wife. Now, let me dispel a myth for you. Yes, I'm in Silicon Valley and yes, my presenters are in Silicon Valley, but let me tell you something. Startups aren't just in Silicon Valley, they are everywhere. They are in Connecticut, they're in Omaha, Nebraska, they're in Seattle, and let me tell you, the number one place, uh, number one place for startups outside of Silicon Valley is where? Oakland, California. <laughs> I knew my Oakland people were gonna be there. So, again, there are plenty of opportunities out there. So why choose a startup? I think there's two reasons why you want to choose working with startups. You can actually have the opportunity to demo new products and new services to your library customers. And the biggest portion, you become part of their success story. And I'll tell you how. And also, it's fast paced. It's usually easy entry. You usually are working with one person who does a multitude of things. So if you get in early, like Karen, uh, she got in early with Alligator Zone. And like me, with a couple of startups, I got very lucky. I got in early, and I get free stuff. So it's pretty cool. So my number one success story is Osmo. And Osmo was named Time Magazine's 2014 Best Toy Invention. But before then, they weren't called that. They were called Tangible Play. And actually, I got an email from a lady named Letitia. She was the number five worker over at Osmo, well, at Tangible Play at the time. She wanted to do a pop-up story time at her startup. And if you saw me last year, I talked about pop-up story times. You can also get it on the PLP website. It's where I take the story time and I move it around to different locations within the city. So at that time, I was at Palo Alto. I moved my, start, uh, my story time in different locations. And so Letitia said, hey, why don't you do a story time at my startup? So I go over there, I went over there, and let me tell you something, a startup is not a place to do story time. If you guys are children's <laughs> librarians, let me tell you, there are courts everywhere. I mean, it, nightmare for kids, right? But then I said, you know what, I'm already here, why don't you demo the product for me? Then when she demoed the product, I went, Aha, there's another application. So if I can get onto the website, let me show you what it is. I, rather than tell you, I'd rather show you.
you guys get the idea. It is basically um, a gaming place. Sorry. There we go there. And so basically it's an educational game, but you have pieces. So it's tangible, so you can, it's, it's tactile, so you can actually use those pieces, and um, it's fun, and it also promotes um, collaboration, and I can't tell you how many times I've actually had kids make friends with other kids who were playing with each other. So we decided to host Happy Hour, and what that was is it's a play on happy hour, and I know you guys know what happy hour is because we're going to be talking about happy hour a little bit later in the Alcohol and Libraries presentation. So happy hour, we would have it from hours 3 to 6 o'clock, and what we would do is we would invite people with um, mocktails and appetizers, and they come to the library and they play this game for an hour. And um, by the way, um, you just saw one of the games in the YouTube clip, but they have four other games. And so um, when I moved jobs from Palo Alto City Library to Santa Clara, um, I had really popular following in Palo Alto, waiting lists. I mean, people were just going crazy over this program. But would it have the same effect in a different city at Santa Clara? And I have to tell you, it absolutely did. In fact, I see a lot of the kids and parents, they actually can't get into the program, so they actually bought the product. Of course, my, my startup was very happy about that. So as you can see, um, we've hosted, uh, we host probably around six happy hours a year. And so to keep it fresh, we don't wanna just do the same thing over and over again, especially with startups, they're very fickle. So I thought, you know what, why don't we deep dive into one of the games? So this is a masterpiece, and what it is is anybody, and I kid you not, anybody can use masterpiece and be an artist and draw. And so it takes like anything from a character from Disney like Elsa, and it puts it on the screen, and so you basically trace out the um, outline of it. And so um, this is Emma over here. We took a picture of her with the iPad and then it translated it into kind of a sketch drawing, as you can see, and she's actually doing a self-portrait of herself, which is pretty cool. So let me just tell you a little bit about the relationship. So as you can see, I have Letitia on the screen right there. She was um, the one that started our whole happy hour, and um, then a year later, as I was telling you with startups, sometimes they change um, employees a lot. And so Letitia decided to move to the East Coast, so I got handed off to Emily. I worked with her for a year and a half, and then she decided to change startup companies. So I got handed off to Ada and Jessica, and so I'm working with them right now on our current happy hours. But yeah, you would think that employee turnover would be really bad, right? But actually, it worked out in my favor because Emily decided to go to another startup. And this startup is called Swivel. And this was actually just like a month and a half ago, literally. I mean, I was changing my presentation like weekly because um, with these startups, you just never know. So Swivel, um, basically it's like having a cameraman without having one. So what it does is, let me show you. Let's go over to this other clip. And I'm probably gonna have to narrow eight this one. So what it does is it has the iPad. iPad. The swivel. This is the microphone and detector that the speaker wears. Microphone goes up to the top. The speaker moves yep, around the room. Right. The yeah. camera follows the device right. uh, so that as you're making a presentation, that you are recorded wherever you are. And since the microphone is with the person, the audio is outstanding. So, as you can see, the swivel moves around back and forth. Um, so that wherever you are in this presentation, unfortunately, again, working with startups, they forgot to give me the remote for this. But it goes, so the lapel mic sits on the top, has an infrared, and it swivels back and forth. So then that way, when you're recording something, like let's say an author talk, or let's say a story time, you don't have to have the, you don't have to have a still hand to do this. The swivel does it for you. And, let me show you what I use this for. So actually, we had a speech and debate program at our library, and hopefully, because wonder of technology. 
I know it sounds like arguing, but debate is very methodical. You have to research your argument and you have to back your claims up with evidence. And how do you get the evidence? Through research, okay? So as you can see, the video quality is very good and it's swiveling back and forth. I'll show you another one. If it'll go. I think it's gonna be about ball. I think playing ball is fun and you can get great exercise with it. And if you're really good at it, you can earn a living with it. So again, <laughs> the, the subject piece was about ball. And so he was talking about all the uses of the ball. So yes, I mean, you can use it for a myriad of programs, including story time and including author talks, presentations. And I actually use this as promo material for our next programs. The other startup that I wanted to tell you about that I'm actually working with, and I'm actually having a program tonight, so I have to go back to Santa Clara for this program, um, is Tasteful. And what they are is through your smartphone, it's an app that you download. And for those of you guys who are on diets, paleo conscious diets, it will find you paleo friendly restaurants with your smartphone. And so um, how this came about is my friend Paul, he was at a bar this bar, and um, he had met this guy named John, and John was telling him all about his company, and he's like, my friend Paul, for some reason, I've known him for four years, was like, hey, you know what? My friend Cheryl, you should probably talk to her. She's like the branch manager of a library. She might wanna work with you on a program. So then he passed me off, I emailed John, he passed me off to his marketing girl, Kendra, and I said, you know what? heard about this company, I'm like, maybe we could do a Tasteful Tuesday where we can have a chef who does paleo recipes come into the library and actually do a program. So tonight, we're featuring chef and author Simone Miller from Zen Belly Catering, and she's going to be coming into our library tonight and uh, doing a cooking demo. So that's how that partnership came about. And then if you remember Kendra, right? Then, so in my meeting with her, she was talking about all about, you know, tasteful, but then she goes, you know what? I also work for this other startup. And this other startup, I don't know, these startup peoples, they work for everybody. <laughs> she goes, you know, I have, uh, actually, I'm the CEO of my own business. It's called Oh Baby Organics. I'm actually partnering up with my friend, Ani, and what we do is we have baby clothes that are kind of tied to literary themes. So I said, hmm, that's interesting. Well, my librarian and I were talking about, you know, we should probably do more baby programs because unfortunately between her and I, we can, we can only spread ourselves so thin. So we thought, you know what, maybe we should do a baby week. So this was kind of already in our repertoire. And I was like, you know what, it would be great to have her as a sponsor for baby week. So she ended up, I was talking to her about Baby Week. I'm like, we could have a Q&A lactation consultant. We can have a baby fashion show and raffle. We can have baby signing. It could be cool. You just have to front the bill for the entire thing. And fortunately enough, she said okay. <laughs> so that's how um, we worked with O Baby Organics. But there were a couple of problems with this whole program. You know, number one, the Q&A with the lactation consultant. I unfortunately scheduled it during um, Monday Night Football, the first Monday Night Football game, 49ers against the Vikings. Now, Northside Branch Library is the closest library to Levi's Stadium. Bad idea, Cheryl. Horrible, horrible idea. I only had like nine people register and I told her, you know what, I'm really sorry, this is horrible. I don't usually like to cancel out on programs, but unfortunately I'm gonna have to cancel out on this one. I just don't think it's gonna be that great. So um, that was one pitfall. The other pitfall was she forgot, uh, or not, she didn't forget. Um, basically her moms for the baby fashion show and her babies got sick. All of them got sick at the same time. So there was no fashion show. And my new assistant director was coming into the library for the fashion show, and there was no fashion show. Again, as a librarian, you have to improvise and you have to do story time. So we did a baby story time on the fly, and it turned out pretty well. Again, as I was telling you, there are pitfalls to working with startups. Uh, since I have short uh, time lapse here, you always have to make it happen now. 
And there's also, as I told you with the Osmo, there's high employee turnover. There's also a lot of red tape when you work with uh, the public library. And they're also asking for instantaneous results. And you better deliver on those results. So how do you find a startup in your area? So this is where it all happens. It's networking. And my job, I hate to tell you this, does not end when the library closes. It actually begins. And it begins at these networking events. I'm after 6 o'clock. I'm going to these networking events. I'm jumping into conversations. I'm giving them the elevator speech about the library and how we can work with you to help facilitate your startup uh, branding awareness, testing new products, and I try to connect the dots with the synergy between the startup and the library, so that's a mutually beneficial partnership. And you have to sell them on what's in it for them. And so you exchange the business cards, hopefully they bite, and then you follow up with the lunch meeting, which is like a first date. <laughs> so you have to work out the details of the program. So you have to already have in mind a little bit about what the startup is. And then you kind of, again, you discuss the library goals and how those library goals fit in with their goals and how you guys can work together. You plant the seed for that program. And then you send you, hey, it was great to meet you, email. Then back at the library, you have to do all the heavy lifting. It's all about the marketing, it's all about the advertising, it's about keeping in touch with them, it's about making sure that your program numbers are working out with them. And uh, just like I said with the Q&A lactation consultant, my numbers didn't work out. But fortunately enough, with most of my startups, the numbers have worked out, people have been very happy with the numbers and pleased, again, with like Zenbelly, um, with the, um, with Chef Simone Miller, we have 126 people registered tonight. So hopefully we're delivering on that. And so if you deliver, let me tell you, they are gonna rinse and repeat. They are gonna come back to you over and over and over again because they're gonna wanna work with you. And then the library becomes part of their success story. Therefore, building that relationship. And it's all about building that relationship. And then what's in the future for Santa Clara City Library and startups? This is the one I'm working with now. It's One Traction. They are a startup accelerator. What that means is that they bring your startup to the next level, funding. They kind of fast track you into a funding uh, realm. And um, so you'll hear from Matt about hackathons. And one of the things I wanted to work with them on is doing an adult hackathon. Uh, but unfortunately, Santa Clara, I'm dealing with a lot of red tape, so I'm trying to cut the red tape and trying to make it happen. But again, it's happening very slowly. So this is me. If you want to contact me, again, my presentation constantly changes. It was changing up until the last minute. <laughs> again, working with startups, that's how it goes. 